Hello, kindred spirits. Welcome to the Magical Mystical Divinations podcast. I'm your host, Southern Mystic Tama P, creator of mysticdivinations.com. That's mystic with a K, by the way. I invite you into my sacred space located in the heart of East Tennessee, where I will share with you topics on inner magic, mystical insight, navigating spirituality, and most importantly, how to use divination to enhance and improve your daily life. Grab your favorite drink and hang out with me for a spell. For lighthearted insight, tips and tidbits, a lot of wisdom as we connect on a higher level. Thank you for joining me. Season 1, Episode 4 is all about divination magic. What it is, how it helps transform my life, and how you can use it to transform yours. You don't have to be a prophet or an oracle or a soothsayer or a medium. All you have to be is you. Maybe, just maybe, you have some mediumship within, more than you recognize. Have you experienced changes in your awareness? Do you perceive more than you did before? If you can answer yes, then you will want to tune in to this episode. Episode 4 is titled, What is Divination Magic? Well, my friends, divination magic is a real-world practice reaching far into human history. Divination magic is that which gains the upper insight into the unknown. For some people, this can be completely natural without requiring use of many tools. These fine folk just know. They may not even understand how they know. They just do. For others who have an interest or an awareness, they may require some special tools, such as horoscopes, astrology, crystal gazing, tarot cards, and the Ouija board. (laughs) Ooh, touchy subjects, often labeled taboo. Well, we are going to drop that mindset and leave it here on the outside of my sacred space. Whoever wants to pick it back up on the way out is welcome to do that. But here and now, I welcome no negativity, dark uses, or bad intentions. Today, I am talking about divination used universally for practical problems, private or public, seeking information upon which practical decisions can be made. For myself, I discovered through prayer and meditation regarding personal matters of great importance If I asked for signs, I would receive them. I had to be specific about the information I wanted to know. I would also write down what I wanted. And through this form of journaling, I could look back and see that the divine always answered me back. Maybe not instantly, but the answers would surface. I eventually realized that the universe, that my divine creator, wanted me to hear or feel or know what was intended for me to know at that time. It may not have been exactly what I wanted to discover because it didn't fit the idea I had molded in my brain for the outcome, but I swear to you, the universe guides me. Over time, I started using specific divination tools to express myself to the universe, and I asked that the universe provide guidance through the same tools. Believe it or not, once I set the scope and the boundaries, the answers and the signs sometimes came so certainly that at times I was overwhelmed. The truth is, many times during my life, I was a little frightened, and I would turn away from my spirituality, explore other religions or spiritual modalities, or completely shut myself off from outside influence. And each time I felt hollow, void of happiness, void of contentment, I felt incomplete. With respect to the attitude of the listeners today concerning divinatory practices, my idea of divination is strongly associated with divine guidance, fate, messages from God, Working with the universe in this way has changed my life and who I am for the better. So after I returned to my practices and beliefs, I haven't looked back since. I have routines and methods to my madness. They work. They fit. That's what I want to share with you through this podcast and other media outlets. I promised at the beginning of this episode that we would identify what divination magic is, how it transformed my life, and how it can help transform yours. One example of how I use divination is that each morning when I feel compelled to seek guidance, I will pull one tarot card from my own personal deck, used exclusively for my own divination. I will also pull one oracle card because oracle decks are my favorite. I will ask for specific answers or signs or guidance from above before I pull these cards, 
The consistency of my routine is that I shuffle the deck one time and cut it three times, and the top card is the message intended for me from the universe. Friends, I want you to know that more often than not, the cards drawn are on target and precise. Sometimes they may be vague, and I still give cadence to the card and the message because, as I mentioned earlier, the answer may indicate that I'm not ready for the knowledge just yet. Through many years of practice and patience, I have seen that the answer will come when it is God's timing. That is faith, the very definition of it. I trust and believe that the divine, my creator, will always guide me towards what is in my best interest. To people unfamiliar with divination, it may seem that practitioners are relying solely on magic and sorcery for predicting the future. This isn't necessarily true. Most are using their intuition, which I believe we all have intuition. We just have to learn to trust ourselves. The fact is, there are many different types of divination and divinatory tools. Magical practices and divination is as unique as you are, and it can be custom-fitted to your beliefs and lifestyle. You may find that you're more gifted using one method over others. And of course, practice makes perfect, but you will never know unless you research, explore, and try it. So let's take a brief look at some of the different types of divination methods. In future episodes, I will devote more time to speak in depth on some of the most common divination tools and practices. I have future plans of posting short videos on my YouTube channel of the many wonderful sacred tools I own. In my sacred room, I have just about everything one can use to practice divination, but that doesn't mean I use all of those tools. For instance, I have never tried to read palms. Palmistry is the art of analyzing the physical feature of the hands to interpret personality characteristics and predict future happenings. As for tarot cards, I own a lot of tarot decks. Tarot card readers will tell you that cards simply offer a guideline and the reader is simply interpreting the probable outcome based upon the forces presently at work. I prefer to think of tarot as a tool for self-awareness and reflection rather than fortune-telling, and some tarot readers do use the cards to predict the future. My experience has been that the tarot card messages and predictions are not written in stone. The tarot cards can assist in telling us what is going on, what preceded the present tense, and if nothing changes from here on out, what the probable future might be. As I mentioned earlier, the cards have been uncannily accurate for me once I learned how to use them for personal divination. Which leads us to the oracle cards I love so much. Why are they my favorite cards to use for divination? Because oracle cards are more open-ended in theme, structure, and artist interpretations than tarot cards, and they simply have fewer rules. I love beginning my mornings doing a single card pull from any of my many oracle decks. I use them to gain clarity and tap into my inner wisdom for a variety of purposes such as love, career, family, ancestral healing, and personal growth. I also use them to expand upon tarot card readings. For me, oracle cards help you to understand what your consciousness is creating, as well as reveal any hidden blocks that may be delaying your progress, promoting personal and spiritual growth. The information they bring can empower and inspire you because it comes from heavenly messengers, friends from the spirit realm, and from your own higher self. At least that is my strong opinion. I also own a few sets of runes. The word rune comes from an old Norse meaning, secret letter. The Vikings carved runes into stone, wood, or iron, and they are more angular than modern letters because of the difficulty of making round edges and hard materials such as that. I've never had anyone personally read runes for me, nor have I learned very much about using them for divinatory purposes, but I have learned that runes are powerful additions to rituals and meditations. Choose a rune that really speaks to your aspirations and inner purpose. Place it on your desk as a constant reminder of your intentions. How can that be a bad thing? Some people also read tea leaves. Recently, I was gifted a teacup for astrology. The idea behind tea leaf reading is that whilst drinking, a person's movements affects the leaves swirling around so that when they settle, the shapes are unique to them. It is then up to the reader to interpret these shapes. I believe this method of divination would be wide open to intuitive interpretation. But isn't most divination open to interpretation? There is also another form of divination which is known as automatic writing. Automatic writing, also known as spirit writing or trance writing, is a fascinating practice that involves allowing the subconscious mind to take over and write conscious thought. This process can lead to increased creativity, insight, and self-discovery. Interestingly enough, I have drawn the automatic writing card several times in the past few months. I've been thinking about giving it a try. 
It sounds pretty simple to do. Basically, we need to set aside time, find a quiet place free of distractions, which would be that sacred space we talked about in episode two. Then we focus on clearing our mind as we enter a meditative state. We then place our pen or pencil on the paper, let our hand write whatever comes naturally without overthinking. Also, we, we must avoid looking at our writing until we're finished. Hmm. I am feeling more inclined to give this a try. I will let you know if I do and if anything magical or otherwise happens. Other tools used for divination are pendulums. I own at least a dozen different pendulums and have found this tool to be very useful. Pendulums are used in spirituality to promote physical and spiritual healing, balance the body and mind, and even answer questions. Also, it's important to understand that you don't choose a pendulum. The pendulum chooses you. When you see a variety of pendulums, look carefully at each one. Pay attention to which one visually appears to you. But more importantly, pay attention to how you are feeling as you place your hand beneath the pendulums. See if you can feel any energy coming from a particular pendulum. It may feel like a subtle vibration or a change in temperature. Touch or hold the pendulum. Does it vibrate or swing back and forth or even in circular motions? Your subconscious, your higher awareness is creating the most subtle of unintentional movements to travel from your mind through your arms to your fingers as it attempts to communicate with you. When you feel a connection with a pendulum, it can create an almost euphoric emotion. The same can be said of divining rods. Yes, you guessed it, I own a pair of those. These are one tool that helps us access our intuition as well as information from the collective unconscious. Divining rods are known tools for communicating with spirits. When I was in a paranormal group, we often used dousing rods at haunted locations to attempt communicating with the spirit world. But that discussion will be held on a later date in a different episode. Also, the divining rods can be used to ask your spirit guides and guardians to answer yes or no questions or lead you to lost items or lost people or pets. And of course, dousing rods are perfect for finding water. Everyone should own a pair of dousing rods, in my opinion. There are so many different tools and methods for divination magic, one episode of a podcast can't possibly touch on them all. But I did want to leave you with a tad more information. Regular playing cards, dominoes, and dice have all been used in magical divination. For instance, divining with dominoes is a form of divination referred to as the karma and the domino effect. Conceptually, our actions have repercussions that travel through time and space. Like a single falling domino that triggers a series of subsequent falls, one action in life can set off a chain of events. Recognizing that our actions have far-reaching consequences empowers us to navigate life with a greater sense of accountability and mindfulness. By being more mindful, we can strive to create a positive domino effect where each action contributes to a cascade of harmony and well-being in our lives and the lives of others. If you are curious to try the domino divination, know that each domino is assigned a value or a meaning, and there are countless combinations as there are ways to read the tiles. So we can't go into the rules in this episode. The same with regular playing cards. There are so many spreads and meanings assigned to the suits and faces of the cards, but I want to assure you that some of the best readings come from a simple deck of cards. In fact, I do a lot of Appalachian-style readings incorporating playing cards with either tarot or oracle card readings. Using regular playing cards to tell your fortune might seem like a slumber party trick, but it's actually called cardomancy and dates back to the 1700s. Which leads me to a brief story, which is completely true. As I mentioned in the first episode, which was more of an introductory episode, I'm from the South and my mother was from the Appalachian Mountains. She was raised in a Christian household. But several of our relatives were into mediumship. One such relative was my great-aunt Liza Jane. She was my papa's sister. Aunt Liza Jane lived in Harlan, Kentucky. She was a well-known psychic in that area, and people would travel for miles to have her read for them, especially after she helped find a missing child by using her psychic abilities, which made the local news. My mom always told me that she was instructed to never let Aunt Liza Jane read her fortune. But mom loved her Aunt Liza Jane, especially as a child. My mom was more fascinated with her Aunt Liza Jane's long, thick hair when she would let it down to brush it out each night than Liza Jane's notoriety for being a psychic. But mom said she never did let her aunt read her fortune. My mom believed that her aunt was just a normal lady who used her intuition. She tapped into her natural gifts and relied on a higher presence to guide her. And while she used regular playing cards to foretell people's fortunes back then, 
Aunt Liza Jane usually just went with her gut feeling, her gut instinct, and her life experiences, while being very, very observant and paying more attention to what people did more than what they said. Wait, she often studied their body language when she read for other people, and their actions would lead her intuition. While I believe my mom is mostly right, I also believe Aunt Liza Jane had very special gifts and insights. I promised I would tell you how personal divination can help improve your life. And I shared with you many different means of magical divination. I have tarot decks, pendulums, runes, and oracle decks for sale on my website and on my Etsy store, and I will be adding more goodies very, very soon. I hope that I piqued your interest or at least encouraged you to use personal divination to help you focus on your goals and how you can use these tools to communicate with your highest self or your divine guidance. Feel free to ask your divine to answer you with signs using the same tools that you're using to communicate with the divine. Doing magical divination for yourself helps you when you are seeking answers or confirmation or validation in your life or when you seem stuck or confused and need a little more guidance. And although magical divination can seem complicated and it does get very, very deep, it really can be just as simple as you want to make it. Whenever you're doing personal divination, though, always invite positive energy into your life and home. Cleanse or sage yourself and your space and keep it free from the things in life that can bog you down. In fact, keep your mental space free from the things that life can bog you down. And personal divination can help you with that. I know for myself, when I'm really feeling down, the best thing I can do is go meditate or listen to some inspirational music or sometimes just move around to a crazy music and just be my crazy self and just let it all go. Sort of like the Taylor Swift song, Shake It Off. Well, you can do that with personal divination. Anyway, I know we could go on and on about divination magic and supernatural stuff and stories and all that. And I do intend to cover more topics in future episodes. But for now, we can close this episode for a short while. I want to leave you with some positive quotes. This quote is from Roald Dahl. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Remember that. Another one is magic is believing in yourself. If you can do that, you can make anything happen. This has been a Mystic Divinations podcast. I am your host, Tama P. Be sure to visit my website, mysticdivinations.com. That's mystic with a K, by the way. Also, please subscribe to this podcast. And most importantly, thank you for joining me today. Blessed be.